we're waiting on cells to finish processing but do you, I mean we've got some time do you want to go um, play ball or you want to go to the park or frisbee maybe to go on a walk do you want to play with electronics Hi, welcome to Canis Bader Christmas. In this episode, I'm going to show you my cell processing process. Um, I really wasn't gonna do this, but I figured for the sake of completeness um, and, and kind of explaining some of the things that I've done might you know, help some of you that are starting down this path. Um, I also got a question from somebody asking why is everybody building power walls out of 18650s? Uh, new sealed lead acid batteries are 10 times cheaper than used 18650s. They're also safer, easier to build out, and easier to recycle when the time comes. He also added that, you know, the, the advantage of lithium is space. Um, you can put a lot, you know, the energy density, you can put a lot more energy in a smaller space, but with a power wall, that's really typically not a problem. You have space in a stationary power wall. For most people, I would say that's true. I don't know that that's the case in all cases. The cost factor is something that's a little misleading because uh, you're not really comparing apples to apples at that point. So let's say you wanted to build a 100 amp hour battery. Now if you use 18650s and let's say you get 2.5 amp hour cells or 2500 milliamp hour cells, it would take about 40 of those to get you to 100 amp hours. Um, now let's say we're doing 12 volts. So it would either be three of the or four of those in uh, series. Um, so best case, it's 120 cells. Worst case is 160. Yeah. So let's figure about $170 for a hundred of those. So you're looking at about $340 for 200. Now for lead acid, um, you really only get about half of the capacity of the battery. So you've got to double that. So you could go out and buy a 100 amp hour uh, lead acid battery, but you, to equal the capacity of what you're building on the 18650 side, you'd need 200 amp hours. Now I found a 200 amp hour uh, AGM marine type battery at my local Batteries Plus for $204. So just straight purchasing, you know, what you can purchase, it's 340 versus 204. The other thing you have to keep in mind is the cycle count. So the cycle count on lead acids is again about half as much as you can with 18650s. Now I understand that we're getting used 18650s and so we don't know what the cycle count is on them uh, or uh, we don't know how hard they've been hit, you know, what kind of life they've had. So it, it's, it's tough to tell, but just from a straight numbers perspective, you get about half as many cycles on lead acid as you do with 18650s. Now it's true that the upfront building cost is going to be higher for 18650s because it takes a long time to put those together, but you'll be replacing the lead acids more often. So, um, you know, that could balance out. This also doesn't take into account the scrounging ability of somebody or the availability of 18650s wherever you are. Now, it may be hard to get them where you are. Um, it may not be for someone else. There are small businesses that have sprung up because people are good at scrounging some of these cells. They have more than they need, so they're selling them off. So it is harder to find them. It's not impossible. Now, as for recycling, I know that there is a, there's been a lot of work put into recycling lead acids. Um, probably not as much put into doing 18650s, although I did see something recently where they're doing that. So I don't know. It may be a thing now. It 
may be just a landfill somewhere. I, I really don't know. As for safety, look, don't abuse them. Don't puncture them. Don't overcharge them. <laughs> don't throw them in a fire. Uh, don't put them in a wooden box. I can't tell you how many wooden boxes I've seen people build for their cells. And it's probably not a good idea. Unless you fireproof it. Or, you know, if you build it out of... Um, cement board the hardy backer kind of stuff you know the the stuff that you put tile on there may be other don'ts but uh do your own research if you're gonna start playing with this stuff <laughs> so i hope that answers your question mark and if not leave another comment and i'll see if i can figure something else out the process for measuring capacity is you put cells into the tester it charges them all up to 4.2 volts and then it discharges them down to three volts and it, it measures the capacity between 4.2 and three volts. Then it charges them back up to 4.2 volts. That whole process can take about 12 hours or longer depending on the capacity of each cell. And that's why you will typically see people with multiple chargers. If you're building a 1S, a, a single series cell it really doesn't make that much of a difference because you know you just keep adding capacity and and that's fine when you start adding multiple cells in series then you want to try and get them as close as possible uh the same capacity because you know you want them to charge and discharge at about the same rate if you got one that's going crazy then you'll really have an inconsistent battery and you won't be happy with the performance so the goal of processing these cells is to find out, you know, each one of them, what's their capacity. You sort them into groups. And then when you go to assemble the packs, you can assemble packs that are about the same capacity. Now I did say before that the testers that we have are not the most accurate thing. So just because something says it's 2000 milliamp hours and this one is 2050 milliamp hours you really have no idea of if knowing if they're really any different um, I have a chart I've got four opus chargers and I charge four batteries uh, the same four batteries in each one of the chargers and I got different numbers on each one of the chargers so here's that chart um, I also have a Zan flare charger and a Lido Kala charger and so I put those in there as well they're all within a couple hundred milliamp hours but they're none of them were exact and I don't know really which one to believe so what I'm doing is just grouping these into groups of 100 milliamp hours and honestly I don't know if that's even too detailed but that's what I'm going with that's the I think that's going to be the best chance of success for getting seven packs as close as I can get them I have also seen the procedure that people follow to process cells all the way from barcoding each cell and reading that into a database so that you can completely track every aspect of the cell to basically just putting stuff together randomly and seeing what happens i think there's a happy medium in there um i don't you know since we don't have laboratory test equipment with this stuff i think getting super detailed on it is um a little misleading to do that i mean you know if that's what you want to do fine i, I have no problem with somebody doing that I, I think it's actually kind of a cool idea i was like well that's kind of neat and then i was like yeah i don't want to do that so i i think i have come up with a kind of a happy medium for uh you know sorting these cells and getting them tested uh we'll see how well i did once i assemble all the packs and then do the final test on them so this is when all the chargers are, are done i'll go through all of these and kind of get an idea of what ranges i need so here's some 29s some 26s uh 26s 27s 28 so i need 26 27 28 29 so i'll use one of these cell holders for each hundred uh, milliamp hours 
And then what I'll do is I'll get me a little sticky pad. They only have five colors in this, so instead of seven, I'll just have to keep rotating through here. I'll just pick one color and um, write down the capacity. Let me do this real quick. So I'll do this, can you see that? So it's 2,900 milliamp hours. Today is the 19th and the 26th is when they need to be tested again. So I'll just check, you know, I'll pull these out. I'll sort them out into this group. Um, and then I'll test them in a week. If they've got more than four, I think 4.1 or higher is what I'm gonna do. I think uh, Daniel does it at, 4.05 and I'll see what happens with uh, cells that are a little bit older see if I need to go down that far I did have one cell so far in all the testing that was 4.09 the rest were 4.1 or better so you know I may adjust that but right now it's going to be 4.1 so anyway I'll just go through here uh, so this is 2900 let me see if I can find that one yeah, that's here. So here's 29. That's 29, 29, 28, and 28. Okay, so this one is still charging, so I'll leave it alone, but this is 29, 29, and 28. So and these are also backwards from the opus what I mean backwards the positive is here but on the opus on the opus the positive is back here so you gotta make sure that you don't mess that up okay so I have my little note on here and I know that each one of these is a hundred so this is 29 28 27 26 it says the date that I pulled them out of the charger and then a week later when they need to be tested and then I'll go put that over with the cells that are waiting their week All right, this is my one week waiting table. Each horizontal row of cell holders is one day and each cell holder is 100 milliamp hours of capacity for that group of cells. So as they come out of the charger, they go to the back of the line and the ones at the front get tested once they've been sitting a week. I bought some bins to group all the good cells, the cells that are above 4.1 volts after sitting out a week. And I have one bin for low capacity cells and one for cells that need to go to a recycler or will be used as practice cells as we get further along in the process. If one group fills up one of these bins, I can just stack another one on top and start filling that one up. These have been sitting for a week. And if you notice that I have these lovely little heart stickies i have more manly ones now but that's what i had to begin with but these <laughs> these have been sitting for a week uh this is 2400 23 22 and 21. so i'll test these to see if they are over oh, let's just see what they are so we'll start with the 21s Line them up. And I'll just go through and check them. 4 .1, 2, 4 .9, 4 .4, 4 .4. So except for this one, they're above 4.1. So on this one, I'm going to kick it out and see if it does I'm, I'm going to run this through the second part of the process um, these good to go so I will put those in the pile so I'll do the same thing here here and here and that's what we'll do going forward and since I'm going to be in here for a while I'll load them back up
that's the process that I'm going to follow uh, going forward. Feel free to tell me that I'm wrong and uh, suggest a better way. There's still time to correct the mistake if I'm making one, but uh, just based on everything that I've seen, I think that that's a workable solution. It's not uh, super detailed, but at the same time, we'll find out later how well, how well it works. If you have any questions, leave them below and oh, I got a little treat for you. Don't, don't shut it off yet. I got a new outro. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Now I shot an email. Game, game. So I got six of these and so they... I got five.